The morning sun peeked over the rolling hills, painting long shadows on the dusty path leading out of Willow Creek. Old Ben, his hands rough and strong from years of work, adjusted the worn leather bag across his shoulder. Tucked inside, amongst bits of cloth and dried herbs, was a folded piece of paper a letter from his son, Tom. Life in Willow Creek, a small, forgotten village nestled in a big valley, had been simple for Ben. He and Mary, his wife of almost 50 years, raised their four children here. They watched them grow up and fly away, like birds leaving the nest. Only Tom remained, his quiet strength a comfort to Ben. Two years ago, Tom left Willow Creek for the bustling city of Riverton, chasing dreams and a better life. Though heartbroken, Ben understood. He too, once dreamt of adventures beyond the familiar fields, dreams sacrificed for family and duty. The letter, delivered by a tired traveler passing through Willow Creek at sunrise, was the first news Ben had from Tom. Unable to read, a skill never passed down from his own parents, Ben felt a familiar pang of helplessness. School was a luxury Willow Creek couldn't afford, and Ben, busy with farm chores, never attended himself. Mary, resting peacefully in their small cottage, stirred with the morning breeze. Her eyes, the color of faded bluebells, fluttered open as Ben approached. Worry lines etched her face. No rest for the weary, honey, she asked, her voice gentle. Ben, a flicker of hope in his eyes, held up the letter. News from Tom, he announced. Mary's smile faltered. Another one we can't read, Ben? Ben sat on the edge of the bed, a sigh escaping his lips. That's the trouble, love. I can't keep Tom waiting, not knowing if he's alright. Mary, ever resourceful, offered a solution. Young John, the baker's son, is learning his letters. Maybe he can read it for us. John, barely sixteen with messy brown hair, was eager to help. His enthusiasm was contagious, and excitement replaced Ben's worry. John, perched on a stool in the dim light, unfolded the letter with shaky hands. It's from Tom Miller, Willow Creek, John began, his voice nervous. Dear Mom and Dad, he continued, his eyes scanning the page. The letter, filled with a son's love and longing, described Tom's new life in Riverton. He worked long hours in a noisy factory, but earned good money. He shared a small apartment with two other men and missed the peacefulness of Willow Creek. He sent some money, a small fortune in Willow Creek terms, to help Ben and Mary. Tears welled up in Ben's eyes as John finished reading. Relief and worry washed over him. Though happy about Tom's hard work, the money order presented a new problem. Ben had never been to a city let alone a place like Riverton. He didn't even know what a money order was. John, sensing Ben's confusion, 
explained. It's like paper money, Mr. Miller, but you can't use it here in the village. You need to go to Riverton and cash it at the post office. Fear not at Ben's stomach. The trip was long and scary, but the thought of failing Tom filled him with a strong will. That night, he packed a simple bag with some bread, cheese, and a water bottle. Mary, worried sick, insisted he take his walking stick for support. The next morning, as the first rays of dawn painted the sky, Ben set off for Riverton. He walked for hours, the sun climbing higher, turning the path into a shimmering ribbon of heat. Hunger gnawed at his stomach, but his determination kept him going. Finally, after what seemed like forever, Ben reached the outskirts of Riverton. The sight that greeted him was overwhelming. Tall buildings, their windows reflecting the sun like angry eyes, lined the streets. Carriages honked and bumped into horse-drawn carts and loud machines. The air, thick with smoke and city sounds, was a world away from the clean, fresh air of Willow Creek. Ben felt lost and confused, 